One man's poison. Oh. Interested? Who made this? Is another dog's delight. I'm proud to say that would be I. Sometimes when you squeeze a lemon... How could you invite that girl into our home? She's a good kid, down deep. You get lemonade. I'm just so sorry. You might have a real future in apologies. And other tastes just beg explanation. You guys aren't going to believe who I just saw down in the vet office. Carl Vertigliato. And I hear the sun, major dreamboat material. You were an angel last night. An angel. You're right, Polly. She looks like an angel. Why don't you go get undressed? I mean, uh, get your shirt off. Whatever you say, Dr. Hans. He just happens to be one of the most connected guys in all of Providence. Connected to what? With the mob. To the tango. Subconsciously, of course. It would make sense. What's that supposed to mean? They say it's the dance of frustrated love. Here to dance? Oh, I'm sorry. B bad back. Excuses, excuses. Here you have this perfect gentleman. I didn't even know him. Uh, I was talking about Paul. He's charming, smart, connected. Ah, uh, nobody's perfect. Shall we? Oh, wrong shoes. Even if I wanted to date Paul, I couldn't. Why not? He hasn't asked me yet. And besides, I'm not sure he's right for me. There's one way to tell. Chemistry. Rhythm. The fit. Ergo, you dance. It takes two to tango. Well, it is either Catanooga Surprise or Catanooga Delight. And I have to decide because the grand opening's in two days. What do you think? What about Catanooga Choo Choo's? <laughs> You're brilliant. Morning. Hey, Hannah. Hanson's. Uh, oh, hold on. Okay. Sid? It's for you. I think it's Paul. Uh, you know, just tell him I'm on my way out. Okay. Uh, she's just running out. Maybe you can catch her at the clinic. Okay, bye. I just gotta run and get my books. Yeah, take your time. What's up with that? With what? Blowing Paul off like that. Was the date that horrible? We didn't go on a date, we just went for a walk. Yes, but sometimes a walk is more than a walk. Especially if there's money involved. What do you mean by that? Did he buy you anything, you know? A, a coffee, a drink, a banana split? Well, I was very careful not to cross the line between walk and date. What are you so afraid of? Mm. Well, Paul's very attractive. And intelligent. Very sweet. But, uh... You think you're gonna make pasta for the rest of your life? No. It's just that whole familia thing. What about the whole Hanson familia thing? <laughs> it's not the same, Joni. I mean, our family's not on the other side of the law. If you don't count Robbie. Seriously, I just think it's best that I not get involved. You know, don't you think you're being unfair? Do you know one person who can say for sure that the Retigli Auto family has done anything wrong? You have a point. Of course you don't, because they're all at the bottom of the Providence River. <laughs> I'll have a non Uh, Helen? What's going on? Seems like your friend Paul wants to make a good impression. Oh, I can't believe you did this. A little something to jumpstart your day and to let you know I'm thinking of you. 
We can't accept this. You want to tell them that? Besides, a little cappuccino never hurt anyone. Maybe you should just relax and enjoy the gift. Well, I did skip breakfast. Try the cannoli. They're out of this world. Excuse me, Dr. Reynolds. Is the patient for you in exam room two complaining of stomach cramps, dizziness? I I'll take it, Patrice. Just tell them I'll be there in a second. Thanks. Hey, Sid. Shall I save you a cannoli? Uh, sure. Hi, Mr. Vinton. I'm Dr. Hansen. Is hey. your stomach problems? Yeah, my stomach, my head. I'm a mess. Well, let's have a look. Any soreness? Not really. When did this start? A few weeks ago, a month maybe. How long does the pain last? A few hours, usually after I eat. Any nausea? Uh, some. How about your eating habits? Have they changed recently? Nah, I just thought I was a stress case. I've been out of work for a while. I finally landed a job a couple months ago, though. What line of work are you in? Landscaping. I work in a nursery over in Waybosset. Yeah, well, a new job can be stressful, but um, I'm gonna order some blood tests and get an upper GI series, and we'll find out what's going on here. Thanks, Doc. I appreciate it. No problem. Oops. <sighs> Morning, Heather. How goes it? I've got a pencil sharpener that's run amok. Otherwise, life is beautiful. How about you? I've got a lizard problem. Oh, an iguana! Iggy, yeah. He's just part of the menagerie in my care at the Bat Cave. Oh, he's amazing. Well, you could say that. See, Backer owns says that I leave his cage open at night, but when I woke up at dawn to find him sleeping on my chest, he nearly gave me a heart attack. Well, how long has she been gone? Maybe he misses her. Iguanas are, are very sensitive creatures, you know. Yeah. Well, so am I. And no offense, but I can't sleep with the thought of, like, the baby Godzilla, you know, creeping into the sack with me. Do you know anything about iguanas? A little. I know that they're strictly vegetarian, and they love cabbage and broccoli, and I know they need a heat lamp, you know, to keep them warm. Um, but by the looks of his epidermis, he might be a little dehydrated. Wow, you can tell all that? Hmm? Heather. Could you watch him for me? See, the thing is that I'm double shifting over at O'Neill's for the next few days, and I really need my sleep. So you really do have a job? Yeah, you've never been there, have you? Oh, no, I, I don't get out much. Well, I'll make a deal. You babysit Iggy for me, and I will take you to O'Neill's for dinner anytime you want. Dessert included? I tell you, you're driving a hard bargain. <laughs> Thank you so much. Iggy, behave. See you later. This is Mommy's new business. It's gonna pay for your college education and Mommy's new thighs. Pretty cool, huh? What about Buddy's Biscuits? Huh? You know, in honor of the mayor. Oh, yeah, good idea. You never know when we're gonna need a favor from City Hall. But don't you think it appreciates something more gourmet, you know, like, um, Buddy's Biscottis? Or, like, Buddy's International Biscuits. Maybe, but with the International Juice Conspiracy next door, people might get confused. How about Hannah's Bow Wow Treats? <laughs> <laughs> Will you hold her a sec? I gotta go check out the facilities. What about a um, fire hydrant, you know, like self-cleaning? Uh, Freddie, why are you holding her like that? Um, a new shirt. So, she's wearing a diaper. Okay. <sighs> She hates well, me. Well, it's you're making her nervous. Um, um, yes. Okay, I'm gonna make some calls, see if we can get some press here for the grand opening, okay? It's gonna be fun. Hi, Lily, what are you doing home so early? Oh, Sid gave me the afternoon off so I could get a head start on my science project. Hmm. You don't happen to have an extra pencil on you, do you? Oh, let me check. Just bought a fresh box and pencil sharpener keeps eating them. Here you go. Oh, thanks. What's the project? You ever heard of this guy, Ruben Goldberg? Rube Goldberg? Oh, yeah, he was great. He built these wonderful, complicated contraptions to do simple household tasks. Right. Well, I can either do a report or build a contraption. Ah, so what are you gonna do? Well, I like the idea of building something, but I figured I'd have a better chance at a good grade if I just do the report. Nonsense. You live in a house with two scientists. Well, I can't speak for Sid, but, uh... Somebody I know might be able to help. Really? Oh, sure. I've always wanted to build one of these things. Oh, you know, thanks, Dr. Hansen, but I'm not really engineering inclined. Well, fortunately for you, I am. Look, it's not so tough. Yeah, 
Yes, this is Dr. Hansen from St. Clair's Clinic. You did a serum amylase for a patient of mine? Yes, Vinton. I'd like to order a complete panel, please. Great. Thanks. I thought I worked long hours. Oh. It's an attractive quality. I've always admired that in a person. Workaholism? Oh, dedication. <laughs> so did you just come here to flatter me? Actually, I wanted to see if you enjoyed your cappuccino this morning. Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, it was very nice. Um, but why? It was just too extravagant. Oh, as a matter of fact, it was just the opposite. You see, my building project got pushed a week, but I'd already hired Benny and paid him a week. Who's Benny? Benny the cappuccino man. I couldn't let him go to waste, so I thought of you and your patients, how they probably don't get a chance very often to avail themselves of the most exquisite cannoli this side of Federal Hill. That was very thoughtful of you. Well, then, let me go one step further and invite you to have dinner with me. I... I don't think so. Dr. Hansen, Sid, I hope I'm not being a nuisance. No. Oh, no, no, you're not. And I hope that you would tell me honestly if you never wanted to see me again. I'd be disappointed, man. But I would honor and respect your decision. All you have to do is say the word. You have a good night, Sid. Expecting Ginger Rogers? <laughs> Wait a minute. The dancing's over so soon? I mean, this time I really felt ready. What can I tell you? You blew it, Sid. I did. I mean, I did, didn't I? Mm. You know what you need to do now, don't you? You need to lead. I'm not sure I know how. Well, you better learn, Sid. It's getting a little late. Yes? Sid Hansen? That's me. I got delivery for you. Sign here, please. Who? Oh. Thanks. This way, fellas! All right, we're taking wow. Oh, all these can't be for me. This table looks good right here. Ooh, right here. what's the occasion? There is no occasion. They're from Paul. Mom, Prince Paul? I thought you were staring clear of him. So did I. Excuse me. E oh. Excuse me. These can't stay here. I, I can't keep these. You signed for them. Can you just take them back, please? Oh, are you nuts, Sid? You can't send a gift like this back to a guy like okay. that. You want to end up like Luca Brazzi? No, Girl's got a point. All right, take him to St. Clair's Clinic. Do you know where that is? Sure, on Federal Hill. Okay, <whistles> fellas, we got a change of location. Let's go. Thanks. Mob or no mob, the guy knows how to start a girl's day. Huh. <laughs> Oh, good, you're here. Come in. Hey, Hat. Huh? So how's Ugly doing? Iggy was a little shy at first, but I took him home with me last night. And we stayed up late, and we ate cabbage, and I read to him. You read to him? Yeah, he loved it. And after that, we talked about Joni's Barkery opening. He seemed so excited about it. You, uh, have you invited him to the opening? Why not? All are welcome. It, it says so on the flyer. Oh, yeah, sure. Heather, will you let me know when Mookie comes in for his distemper shot? Whoa, -ho. new patient? No, not exactly. He's my roommate. Uh, Only lately he started crawling into bed with me. Maybe he's a she. <laughs> Dr. Hansen, you are such a card. What's the matter with him? Acute insomnia. Well, I wish I could help you out, but I'm more of a fur and feathers guy. If you like, I can recommend a good reptile man. No, I don't think we're at that point yet. But thanks for the offer. He's staying with me temporarily. Well, that should soothe the savage beast. <laughs> Don't forget about Mookie. Okay. Hey, Heather, 
If I haven't told you, I really appreciate this. Oh, and that invitation to O'Neill's is still open. Well, good. Because I'm getting ready to take you up on it. Great. Well, anytime. You're the best. Thanks. <sighs> Did you hear what he said? OK, so the local press has been officially notified of the grand opening of Joni's Barkery. Great. I nailed down the recipes for the Mad Dog Munchies and the Feline Franks. I have outside distribution for the people food. Mm -hmm. No offense. Hey, I'm cooking for animals now. I'm way past the point of being offended. There you go, Hannah. So I was thinking, we've both been working really hard. And wouldn't it be nice if we could forget it all with one great romantic night together? Twist my arm a little. You, me. A suite at the Biltmore, room service, candlelight. I'm there. <laughs> great. Let's do it right after the grand opening. Oh, that sounds great. What? Um, nothing. It's just I've, I've never spent a night away from Hannah before. Like, not ever. <laughs> it's just one night, and we're going to stay local. I'm sure you can find somebody to watch her. Yeah, that's not really the point. So what is the point? Nothing. You know what? That sounds great. You're right. Just great. Great. Hi, Sid. Hey. What, what a nice surprise. What, what are you doing? Well, do you have a second, Paul? Yeah, yeah. Uh, listen, I wanted to talk to you. I, I received your flowers. You like them? Yes, they're beautiful. Uh, but... <laughs> They're really wildly... Extravagant? Sid, you know me better than that. Come on. What? Another building project got pushed, and now you ended up with a bunch of extra flowers? Mm, yeah. But I could actually see how the cappuccino followed by the flowers might come off as an overly aggressive romantic gesture. I hope I haven't embarrassed you. No, you haven't. It's just that I really... I... It'd be better if I didn't send you anything from now on. Exactly. I'm sorry I had to come all the way down here just to deliver that message. Look, you're here, though, so you want to grab some lunch? I know a great Italian place. It's in the neighborhood. It's a little hole in the wall. I promise you, you will not find better arrabbiata anywhere. I'd really like to, but I, I just can't today. Maybe some other time. Maybe. We could still do the report. Oh, come on, Lily. I know all this stuff can be a little overwhelming, but look, if you think of our plan as a road map, it will get us to our appointed destination with no problem. Right. Well, yeah, you have to make sure the road is well marked and look out for potential detours, but uh, we can do it. What do you think? I'm worried about the plastic train tipping over the cup. You don't think it's heavy enough? No. What about a roller skate? Good idea. I think Joni's got some out in the garage. Do you think the marbles have enough mass to tip the wooden lever? Good question. No, I don't. That's why we have these. Dr. Hansen, you're great. <laughs> and if you fill out Dr. Hansen, Mr. Vinton just came back in. He seems to be in a lot of pain. Have his blood test come in yet? Hang on, I'll check. <sighs> Mr. Vinton, is the pain in the same place? Yeah. Oh. When did it start? Oh, about an hour ago, right after lunch. <sighs> Is this the most severe it's been? Yeah, it's like someone stuck a knife in my stomach. God. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Again? <sighs> Excuse me, Dr. Hansen. The blood work is in. All right, you just sit tight, Mr. Mitten. Patrice, retake his vitals. Sure. What's up? A patient of mine came back in with severe abdominal pain. His blood work shows organophosphate poisoning. Insecticides? What made you order the blood work? It's a landscaper. I thought it could be occupational exposure. It's a great diagnosis. But these levels are really high. Mm. Dr. Hansen, we need you in here. <clears throat> Patrice, call an ambulance. Start an IV. Get a atropine right away. I'm on it. I need an ambu bag with high flow O2. Atropine is in. The bag. Stand by to innovate. Right away. Here we go. Dr. Hansen, I'm 
I'm Gina Vinton. We spoke on the phone about my husband. Yes, thanks for meeting me. I was on my way in anyway. How is he? Stable. Mrs. Vinton, I know that Dan started a new job recently. I was wondering if you mentioned any problems there. Problems? What do you mean? While there are obvious occupational hazards to his work, I'm concerned about the unusually high levels of poison in his system. There was something he mentioned once. What's that? Right after he got the job, he tried to pick up extra work from some of the customers. I guess one of the other employees found out and told his boss, tried to get him fired. Would it be all right if I called his boss and talked to him? I would hate to get him in trouble. But if you think it would help, it's worth a phone call. Hey, do you think these Christmas lights say warm and inviting? Or do they say these people are too damn lazy to take down their lights every holiday season? No, uh, warm and inviting. Just like you. Good, that's what I was going for. So, what do you think so far? Let me see. Oh, wait, I can't see it. Oh, God, I'm all tangled up here. Oh, well, it's a shame that you can't get free. Mm. <laughs> oh, oh, it's OK. Oh, I know. Oh, wait. Hey, Heidi, would you mind giving her her bottle? It's in the bag. Uh, yeah, I've, I've almost got you free. Here you go. It's all yours. Thanks. Hey, Brady. Do you have something against Hannah? Oh, don't be silly. Of course not. No, I'm serious. You don't want to hold her. You won't feed her. You can't understand why I don't want to be away from her for even one night. Okay. It's not that I don't like Hannah. It's just it seems like whenever we're together now, it's not just you and me. It's you and me and Hannah. Brady, she's my daughter. I understand. I know. It's just... Look, we have a big day coming up. I don't want to ruin it. Just forget I said anything, okay? Okay. Hey, hey, See you brought Aggie with you. I thought the fresh air would do him some good. Besides, I don't think he likes to be alone. So this is O'Neill's. Yep, yeah, all looks splendor. I've only been in Providence a little over a year, and I haven't hit all the hot spots yet. In fact, I haven't hit any that I can think of. Heather, you're a very unusual person. You know that? Is that a good thing? <laughs> Always. So, how'd you end up in Providence? My horoscope. Your horoscope told you to come here? No, but it said that the initials P, R, and I would be very influential while Mercury was in retrograde. And lo and behold, three weeks later, here I was in Providence, Rhode Island. P, R, I. <sighs> Go figure. How? How do you figure? How'd you get here? Oh, <laughs> um, I just looked at an atlas, found the first place with those initials, and jumped on the next train. Wow. I never really would have figured you for such a risk taker. Yeah, well, I'm no evil Knievel. Caesar's Palace on a motorcycle, forget about it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but, um, the train from Albany, I figured I can handle that. So, can I get you a drink? Yeah. Um, I'd like a white wine schwitzer. Oh, and, um, can you get something for Iggy while you're at it? Yeah. Um, what does he drink? <laughs> Are you serious? Iguanas only drink tequila. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, water would be fine. Mm -hmm. Something wrong? I'm just trying to find a connector between the race car and the dominoes. I know it's obvious, I just can't come up with it. Put it out of your mind. Mm hmm? Don't think about it, and the answer will come. My mom used to say that. It works. Your mom, really? I never hear you talk about her. It was so long ago. She died when I was nine. Sometimes I can't even remember her face, and then other times I can remember something she said while we're doing dishes, you know? Yeah. It's like that with Linda, my wife. Little snippets of conversation, usually criticism. <sighs> my mom never criticized me. She always thought what I was doing was great. 
just because I was doing it. You must miss her a lot. Try not to think about it. A bowling ball. What? Bowling ball. It's perfect. Came to me out of the blue. You see? My mom was right. Yes, she was. Hey, Tony. Hey, Shed. You want some takeout tonight? It's just us. Where's Dad? He and Lily went to the hardware store to pick up stuff for their Rube Goldberg contraption. They said they'd pick up some fast food. Dad's eating fast food. What can I say? Lily's turned him into a new man. So, what'll it be? Chinese, Indian, or hey, here's a thought, Italiano. Whatever. Any calls? Nothing from Paul. Did I ask about Paul? Shoot me for thinking. I'm sorry. I've been trying to reach a patient's boss. Never called me back at the clinic. I gave him the number here. I thought maybe he called. Sorry, no calls. <sighs> you know, maybe the nursery's still open. I could just go there and see him in person. And then I could pick up the food on the way back. Whatever. Or not. What's wrong? What is it with these guys I fall for? You know, first there's Richie, who's only interested in Hannah, and then I fall for Brady, who wants nothing to do with her whatsoever. What are you gonna do? Order something fattening and sulk. Sounds like a great idea. Give me a half hour and I'll join you. Where are you going? I'll be right back. Excuse me. Sorry, ma'am, I'm closing up. Let's just want to grab some plants and left to wait until tomorrow. Are you the owner? Yeah. I'm Dr. Sydney Hansen. I've left you several messages today about an employee, Dan Vinton. You're right. Well, I thought you should know he's in the hospital. Yeah, I know. He's suffering from organophosphate poisoning. Maybe from the insecticides you have here at the nursery. What's your point, Doctor? Well, Mr. Vinton is very sick. It's possible that he's being poisoned, maybe by somebody he works with. Look, Dr. Hansen, I don't know exactly what it is you're implying, but I don't like the sound of it. If you have hot evidence about some wrongdoing, I suggest you call the police. Otherwise, stay out of it. Sid, before you start, it wasn't me, okay? I swear. What? The salmon. Salmon? Tim McManus got an extra shipment by mistake. He didn't want it to go back, so he offered to send it to my father. My father doesn't eat salmon, so we've offered to send it to your father. And I told him, if one more thing arrived at your home from the Retigliados, I would be a marked man. Thing is, he promised me Paul, not to. Paul, Paul, it's okay. He must have kept his promise because we didn't receive any salmon. Why are you here? I just want to clear the air. It's understandable, given my family history. Well, see, that's just it. I made a decision. Whatever your family history is, I'm not going to hold it against you. And if you'd still like to go to lunch sometime, I'm open to that. Lunch would be terrific, except right now, with the construction delays, my days are a nightmare. Uh, I understand. What about dinner? Dinner would be great. Dancing? Are you serious? No, I just wanted to see how open you really were. We'll start with dinner. Saturday, 8.30. Perfect. Dr. Hansen? Mr. Tweedy, to what do I owe this pleasure? Look, I want to apologize for my attitude last night. I guess I was a little defensive, but I've always gone out of my way to run a really safe operation. Well, I didn't mean to imply that you personally were at fault. I was just hoping to find out what might have caused Mr. Vinton's poisoning. To tell you the truth, I don't have a clue. But if there's anything I can do to help you, just ask. You have time for a coffee? Sure. Look, Tony, I've been doing some thinking. Me too. You have. See, the thing is, um, every day I have to reconcile my feelings as a mother and my feelings as a woman. Mm -hmm. On the one hand, there's nothing I would rather do than leave Hannah at home and go get my nails done or go to a bar with a girlfriend or spend a romantic night in a hotel with my boyfriend. And then on the other hand, those things seem so trivial because they don't include her. 
You know, I don't want to spend all my time being torn between my child and, and my significant other. Do you understand? Yeah, I do. I'm just not ready for a family. That's a shame. I think it's true what they say about timing being everything. Have you uh, thought about what you would do if we weren't together? No, not really. How about you? I need to make this Barkery thing work. Joni, you have no idea how strong and how smart you are. I saw it the first time I looked in your eyes. In fact, if you were a little more helpless, I'd stick around just to make myself feel better. <laughs> so that's it, huh? No, that's not it. We'll always be friends. Friends to the end. And we're still business partners. 50-50, forever. spoke with your husband's boss. I think you should know that his version of the story is quite different from yours. He said that it was very difficult to get along with your husband. Would you find that an unfair assessment? No, I guess not. Has he ever turned his anger on you? Why do you ask? The amount of insecticide in his system does indicate that he's being poisoned. If it's not happening at work, I, um... He changed. He started drinking. He loses temper at the smallest things. He got fired a few times. But then he landed this job at the nursery and a... Then you found out that he was in danger of losing that job too. I asked his boss to keep him on. Danny found out about it. He said I embarrassed him. He threatened to kill me. So you poisoned him. I was just trying to buy some time. There are other options. Did you try a, a woman's shelter or halfway houses? He always finds me. You do understand that I have to go to the police with this. Maybe if you come with me and explain. What am I going to tell them? The truth. did an amazing job. Oh, could have done it without you, Dr. Hansen. Come on, I didn't do that much. You figured out the velocity problem. What was that, Dr. Hansen? We realized the sharpener was eating the pencils because it was receiving them too fast, so we just trimmed the sail a little bit so the boat brought them in more slowly. <gasps> that is brilliant. Isn't he amazing? Yeah. This is one for the record books. I'm gonna get a camera. Oh, I've got a lot of sharpening to do. I will get the pencils. I'm gonna reload it. Gina, is that... I thought you were my wife. Where is she? Have you seen her? She won't be coming back here, Mr. Vinton. What do you mean? I just left her with the police. What are you talking about? I know what you did to your wife. She's the one who poisoned me, right? Under the circumstances, some people might call it self-defense. You know, I didn't mean to hurt her. I love her. I really do. Well, you have one last chance to prove it. How's that? Leave her alone. Robbie. Thought I'd drop by on my way to work, check on Iggy. He seems to be doing much better. His mood rings are much brighter. His what? The rings. 
right under his ear show how he's feeling. They change color if he's sad or happy or even in love. You kidding? No. In fact, I think he was just lonely for his mom. Like every male in the species, he needs a female presence to be complete. Ain't that the truth? If, if you want, I can hold on to him until Batgirl gets back. You wouldn't mind? For you, Robbie? No, I, I'd love to. You're the best. And from now on, your money is no good at O'Neill's. Kobe, down, boy. This place is a madhouse. Tell me about it. We should have the pets tie the owners up to little posts outside. Joni, the place is spectacular. Uh, Kobe's already polished off a whole plate full of biscuits, and he's made a little poodle friend. Hey, thanks for coming, Mrs. Blake. I hope you'll be a regular. Well, I'm sure I will. So, tell me. Does your father plan to be around here often? Yeah, actually every Wednesdays and Fridays between 4 and 5, he's the centerpiece for our free Visit with the Vet series. Ooh, well, I just have to try to think up some questions to stump him. Actually, it's um, more of a public service type thing rather than a quiz show. <laughs> well, then, uh, does, your, does your father have any favorite treats? For the, for, for, for the animals, of course, I mean. Well, um, you can't go wrong with Helen at the Moon Pie, can you, Brady? One Helen at the Moon coming at you. Oh, oh, you better put a hold on that. Looks like Kobe's trying to push the poodle beyond mere friendship. <laughs> Some party, huh? Yeah, I'm really proud of Joni. As far as I'm concerned, she deserves the full credit. What do you mean by that? Well, just because I came up with the name and the concept shouldn't in any way diminish her achievement. That's very generous of you, Rob. We'll just have to make sure she thinks this is her business. Oh, Dr. Hanson! Hello! Pretty sure she means you. Can I stump mm. you now? Poor Dad. <clears throat> Good luck. I'll get you for this. Here you go. Somebody's excited. So, what do you think, Sid? Tony, this is incredible. You should be so proud of yourself. Yeah, it feels really good. Uh, you should say a few words. A speech? No, like a few words. Brady! Uh, attention, folks. Our creator and co-owner has a few words she'd like to say. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Hello, Joni. I just want to thank you all for coming and uh, say that I could have never pulled this off on my own. Special thanks goes to my dad, who was my inspiration for working with animals. To my brother, Robbie, who actually came up with the concept. And to my ever-present and constant support system, my big sister, Sid. And uh, special thanks goes to a very special person in my life who made me think bigger than I ever thought possible, Mr. Brady Pullman. This one's for you. So enjoy the rest of the afternoon, and thank you so much for coming. Oh, and for any of you that had the turkey meatballs that were passed around as people food, there was a little bit of a mix-up, and it's actually horse meat and was meant for the dogs. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Sign over there said private party. That's because it is private. <sighs> ah, good evening, Mr. Ritigliato. <sighs> this is all for us. I hope you like it. Champagne to start? Sid? Oh, sure. Bring it to the table. I know I promised you dinner, but I suspect you had your heart set on dancing. What makes you think that? I saw the look on your face when I brought it up. That is what you had in mind, wasn't it? Well.